What's going on YouTube? Matt from Garage MC here. In today's video, we're going to get the rest of this 2004 Honda TRX 400EX uh, all put back together and we're going to get it running today. The gasket that I was waiting on finally came in and this is where we're at right here. So the gasket that I was waiting on is the clutch cover gasket. It goes between the clutch cover and the right engine case. That came in today. Uh, what I got to do now is we're going to have to move the brake lever out of our way, uh, take the oil lines off, get the clutch cable off, and get this cover off so we can get access to where the timing chain goes onto the gear in the bottom end of the engine. So stick around, pull up a seat. It's probably gonna be another 25, 30 minute long video and stick around. Don't forget to throw me a thumbs up and subscribe if you guys haven't yet. So, all right, I got the brake lever off. Uh, the only thing that holds that on is there's a pin that goes through the um, rear, um, oh Jesus, I can't even think of the name. The rear uh, cylinder for the brake fluid, uh, master cylinder. Uh, it's just held in with a cotter pin through the back. Well, I mean, this one just had a piece of wire in it, but whatever. Once you take that out, you could flip your brake up a little bit and then pull it out of this slot. And there's also one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, eight millimeter bolts that hold the cover on. Um, two more. Well, there should be two more eight millimeters, but this one looks like it has a eight and a ten millimeter in it. Um, and you also need to remove the two eight millimeters that hold the oil lines on so you can get to this other bolt that's behind this line here. So let me pull this off and we will get to taking the clutch out and everything so we can get to the timing chain. Um, what I do to keep track of where the bolts go, um, I mean, I have another clutch cover here, so I'll just put the bolts back in it. But, um, you know, with your new gasket, you should definitely 100% have when you're doing something like this. You could take the bolts out and stick it into their uh, the holes that they all go to so you don't lose track of where they go. So I took the oil filter cover off. Um, here's one of the bad things about using RTV when you use RTV sealant on stuff, there's chunks of RTV in where the air filter go or where the oil fil oil filter goes. Um, and there was a couple other things that are kind of questionable that came out of this area where the, where the filter is. I don't know if you guys can see this on camera, but see all those little shiny metal particles? All that was in the oil. So before I do run this, I'm going to have to flush this um, pretty good. Make sure, you know, you're not going to get all of it, but I uh, will do my best to try and get as much of it out as I can. All right. Now I got the oil lines out of the way. The clutch is uh, disconnected from the engine and the plate that holds it. This one here for the clutch. I don't know if you guys can see that. Right there. Just wrap this around the oil lines and around the lift so it's out of my way. Gasket stayed intact. Yeah. All right. All right. So right off the bat, we are. <laughs> oh man. We are missing the spring that goes on the shaft in here. I'll show you guys how that gets put on. Um, I do believe I have an extra one. Hopefully, if not, obviously I have to order it, and it's gonna. Make this take a little bit longer but um obviously the case is pretty clean on the inside so here's another reason why rtv and stuff is not always a good method to use let me see if i can get you guys an angle seeing this oil vein right here um so yeah that's a some gunk built up in the vein there so i'll have to clean all that out but um you know when you put rtv on something then you squish the um the cover down or any other piece that you're using RTV on, it doesn't only just squeeze out the outside, it also squeezes into the engine as well. So it's another reason why you really shouldn't use RTV. Or if you do have to, use the most extre extreme minimal amount that you can. All right, so in here inside the clutch cover side, um, the oil gear that goes on the oil pump, it just comes off. It only goes on one way. Um, well, I mean, you could put it on two ways, but um, there's writing on one side of the gear. It says uh, KCY. This is OEM. So <clears throat> the writing 
typically 99.999% of the time when you're installing something, the writing on something will be facing the outside of the quad. Um, so that just comes on and off. What holds that on is uh, the other part of inside the cover holds this in place. It's not going to go anywhere, but there's no bolt that goes to that. Um, next thing that we are going to take off is we are going to take these five 10 millimeter bolts that hold the springs to the clutch basket out. All right, <clears throat> so you get these five 10 millimeter bolts and springs out of the pressure plate. This is the pressure plate. This is the clutch basket. These are the clutch fibers, and then the steels are between those. There should be seven fibers and six steels on 400EX. So we'll just get these out of our way. All right, we'll put these to the side. So you want to just pull the pressure plate off. Comes out like that. Now the next piece that comes out is this. This is the, uh, I think this is the, called a clutch engagement pin. Uh, usually when I take something apart, I just put it back together the same exact way it goes. Uh, especially if it's something new and you don't know, you know, what it is yet. You just, you know, I keep everything in order as I take it apart. So when this comes off, next thing to come out are the fibers and the steels. Just get in here like this. And pull them all out. Notice that these are all set on the, the same, inside the same teeth all the way. Uh, some quads, a lot of quads are, you know, different, but you'll notice some of them are different. Just pay attention to how you take them apart. Just go back the same way. I usually just keep them all together, just like this. Boom, there's that. <clears throat> um, when you do new clutches, you do have to pre-soak them. Uh, if I'm going to have something apart for a long time, maybe like a, a week or, you know, even a few days or whatever, I'll just put them in a plastic bag with whatever type of oil that you are going to run in the quad. Uh, Two-stroke, I believe, obviously, you'd be using gear oil. You know, like 80 weight, whatever it is. Uh, Bellray Gear Saver is what I like for two-stroke. But, um... Next thing we are going to have to take off, now that we got the clutch uh, pressure plate and plates and fibers out, going to remove this bolt or this nut here in the center. This way we could take the um, flywheel and then the basket off as well. All right, so now that we took the um, pressure plates out and the fibers, or yeah, the um, pressure plate, the fibers, steels, we got those out of our way with the clutch engagement pin. Uh, this nut in here, uh, I believe, it's a double check the manual, but I believe these get torqued at 80 foot pounds when they go on. So it's a little bit of a bitch to get off. Um, you know, you definitely want to use a, a larger size ratchet with a impact socket. Um, and this tool here, uh, Tusk makes one of these. Um, this is a, a moto tool company one. I believe they're all pretty much the same anyway. What this does is it holds the inner basket, the uh, pressure plate. This way you can crack this free. Uh, I've seen other people where they stuff a rag in all the way around here where the uh, fibers and steel plates go. And, you know, it kind of binds up. But for the price of these tools, I think you can get them anywhere from like 10 to $20. It's an absolute must, you know. Well, not an absolute must, but it makes any jobs way easier when you have the right tools to do the job, obviously. Um, on the other side of this tool, or these two little nubs or whatever what these are good for is when you're cranking down on the um the nut that holds the uh like a, um, a sprocket on or anything like that you could put these between the teeth of the sprocket so it's definitely a multi-purpose tool great thing to have definitely recommend investing a couple dollars and getting one of these and adding it to your tool arsenal but let's go ahead and get the rest of this off here all right so we got the nut and there's usually you know, this one looks like it's only been maybe off once and somebody, you know, took a punch and hit it back into the groove in the same spot. Uh, looks like it's in decent shape. After that, there are two washers. One says this side out. Um, you know, let you know that this side should face out. And then the one behind it is slightly larger, at least on this quad. Uh, I'm going to double check and make sure they're in the right order. I'm pretty sure they are. Uh, 
There should be another one behind the basket as well. But I'll put these to the side right here with the nut that just came off. And then take your pressure plate and basket out. Yep, there's the other washer I was just telling you about. This one goes behind the pressure plate up against the basket. All right, so before we take the basket out, there's also a 27 millimeter nut and washer that goes onto this gear here like this. You have to take these off as well because this gear here prevents you from, if you can, uh, let's see if I can show you guys. Uh, yeah, you can see it in the, in the camera angle here. See how these teeth aren't lined up with those? It prevents you from taking the basket off. So once you crack that free, pull this off. Just like everything else, we're gonna put it right in order on how it comes out. This one also says out on one side of it. So you know which way it faces out. And there's also a spot where it's flat. It only goes on there one way. So we'll put this here. Now we should be able to remove our basket. Forget there's that little washer in here. Just like this. So I just leave it in there like that. Then I take my pressure plate, just put it in here. That's why we know exactly what order everything goes in. To the side all right so now that that's all out of the way we also to change the timing chain we have to remove the oil pump all right so to take the oil pump out there's three 10 millimeter bolts there's one here one here and one here so now that we have those three 10 millimeter bolts out the one in the bottom is a, a different color it's like a gold color as opposed to these two but all three of them are a different size so you got small in the to the left medium at the bottom the long one at the top right we'll go ahead and slide this out if it will let us <laughs> there we go and same thing as the other stuff we'll just go ahead and put the bolts back into the uh, holes that they go into so we don't lose track of anything and there's also a gasket behind the oil pump, which also has a chunk of something stuck in it. This, uh, this feels like a piece of the cam chain slider. It's rubbery. It's not RTV, but this was also right in here and where the oil port is, where it feeds oil to the engine. So that's a great spot for that. Um, anything else that we're going to take off right here, which is also a 10 millimeter, because we are definitely now changing the chain sliders. This is also a 10 millimeter. I believe there is a small dowel pin that goes around this uh, 10 millimeter bolt that I'm taking out, or a collet, whatever you want to call it. And then there is a washer behind that as well. All right, so taking this out. We got the bolt, we got the little collar that goes around the bolt, and there is a washer here too. So, you got, here's the bottom of the chain slider, the collar is right here, this piece here. And then the washer goes between this and the case, like that, and then the bolt goes through it. We are changing this piece out. So let me just get this collar out, looks like this. Now this chain slider is garbage. Um, yeah, it looks like it did have some damage to it. It doesn't really look like it's missing any, so I don't know where that other piece that we just found in the oil pump came from, but we'll see if we find out. So now that that is out of the way, we can take our cam chain. And see, this is what I was talking about uh, in yesterday's video, I think it was yesterday's video, or maybe earlier in this one, but, um, see this, this chain has no, it doesn't want to, like, flex properly, there we go, it's, it's very tight, it's probably stretched to the max, so uh, let me pull this out of the zip tie that I have it hanging from, and we'll go over to the bench and line it up with the new one and see just how stretched this is. All right, yeah, she was, uh, she was definitely stretched out, guys, here's the new one here. This one, you can't obviously tell, um, stretched a good bit. 
So before we start putting this thing back together, I want to pull the oil screen out, which is right here. It's an eight millimeter bolt. Um, curiosity is getting the best of me. I mean, you should take them out and clean them out anyway, obviously. But um, I'm just curious to see what, what more garbage could possibly be in this oil system. So far we've got RTV, we've got metal chunks, we've got chunks of whatever it is that this came from right here. Um, yeah, I don't know. But let's see what, let's see what behold, hold, or let's just see what we've got in here real quick. All right, put that right there. Wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. We've got some chunkage. It's not too bad. I mean, you know, but... Hey, look at that. RTV sealant. I wonder where that came from. Hmm. I would have never thought I would have found that in the screen. Well, anyway. Let's go ahead and wipe this puppy off. <clears throat> These are reusable. As long as there's no holes in them. You know does have like a, a rubber film around it around the outside of it here um, ooh, we got some we got some trash where that goes too well like I said it's a good thing to pull the screen out and clean it and uh, here's just some of the stuff that was in there guys look at all that trash and that's not even nothing those are the small particles that came out this is also what came out right here more of that black stuff big chunks of aluminum big chunks like i mean that's like maybe a quarter of the size of a dime or something there's quite a few and then there's a bunch that kind of like poured out you can kind of see it on the frame rail there but i mean yeah this uh i mean the quad's gonna oh wow look at this piece i'm seeing now too hold on real quick guys let me show you what I'm saying here. Let me put this down. Watch this. Look at this stuff over here. Look at this. You guys see that? You got all this stuff in here. Oh my god. That's a that's a decent sized chunk right there, man. Alright, so I collected all the stuff that I found inside the engine. Cleaned everything out as best as I could, and uh, I collected everything and put it on this uh, piece of towel right here. Check this stuff out, guys. This is all little stuff that came out of the engine right here. We got some big ass chunks of aluminum, a bunch of big chunks of aluminum. Um, it almost looks like parts of the case or something. I mean, I, I couldn't tell you even what this is or what it goes to without tearing the whole engine down and inspecting everything, but. Uh, that's like maybe 80% of the stuff that was in the engine. Other, all the other little stuff kind of flowed out with the oil. All right. We've got the new timing chain here. we got it strung up with a piece of, uh, wire. I'm going to go ahead and drop this through here. All these steps, just a reversal of everything we just did. The only difference is you got to use torque specs at this time. So we'll just get this on the gear here. Let that hang like that outside the case it stays on all right next piece that has to go on is the new slider so with the new slider come in from the top we got to put our um, little collet or sleeve whatever you want to call it in through here don't forget the washer that goes on the back but let's put the bolt through first and then we can put our washer on just like that and then this goes in this hole right here right where it came out of next thing I'm going to reach for to put back in is the oil pump so we'll take our bolts out remember it goes from smallest bolt medium size large size brass one at the bottom so we'll just get these put down here real quick and feed this in like that Boom, there's that. There is a gasket that goes behind this. It's a little metal 
gasket that is there. So these three 10 millimeter bolts that go on the oil pump, they get tightened to 115 inch pounds. Um, when you're using a torque wrench, you should always hold your hand at the end of the torque wrench. Don't hold it here, hold it here. That's how it's calibrated to be used. One fifteen. One fifteen. All right. So you guys remember we had to um, remove this outer gear before we put our took our clutch basket out. So now that I have it lined up to where it's supposed to be, we can put our clutch basket on. Just get this past it like that. And I'm gonna get the basket lined up with the teeth. There we go. All right. So this is our washer that went inside of our basket. Goes there like that. And then we also had the washer that goes onto this one. Doesn't matter which direction it goes on. Um, if you're ever unsure, you could just look at like the wear patterns on it. But doesn't really matter. So you can see it was clearly being worn more on this side. That was the side facing the gear. But like I said, it doesn't matter which way it goes. This is the same both ways as well. These are normal thread. This primary drive gear nut gets tor torqued down to 65 foot pounds. So now that we got that in place right there, we'll go ahead and also throw our oil pump gear on letters facing out see the hole in the center is shaped like a d so it only goes on there one way like so now next part that goes on we are going to put our pressure plate being that we stacked everything the way that it came apart we got our two washers and the orientation that they go sitting in the basket We'll go ahead and put our basket in after definitely having our washer in here inside the basket. So this is our pressure plate. This is going to go on. We'll get this slid into place. We get the teeth to line up. There we go. And then what held that on was two washers. There was a larger washer that goes, I believe it's the same. Yes, it is the same as a primary drive gear washer. These are the same part number um, from Honda. This one goes on first. And then our outer washer has the word, you know, outside. So this side out, you can see that. Obviously that faces the outside of the quad. That can go on and then we can start screwing this clutch basket nut on. And this nut here gets torqued to 80 foot pounds and then after you get it to 80 foot pounds, you take a punch and a ball peen hammer or whatever you want to use and take the punch and line it up with this little indentation that's in the shaft. It's a little indentation right here, sitting at about two o'clock. Once you get it to 80 foot pounds, just tap that in with a punch and that'll lock it in place. So this is what's great about this uh, clutch basket holding tool. Definitely makes it way easier because when you got to get 80 foot pounds on this clutch basket nut, it becomes a pain in the ass to get a good grip on that. I don't care how many towels you stuff in there. Eighty foot pounds. All right, guys. So now that we've got that all put back together. These is the same orientation that I took these plates out in. Um, if you're putting a new one in, it goes fiber first. Oh shit, they out there shooting. Fiber first, and then your metal plates, if you guys feel the edge of them, one side is squared off and one side is like rounded. 
Um, it doesn't really matter which way you do them, whether they're facing the engine or facing out of the engine, sharp side or round side, um, as long as you do them all the same as they come out. So this one's got the sharp sides facing out. Next plate, next friction plate. Sharp side facing out. Next plate. Sharp side facing out. Next friction plate. Ooh, this one's got a little burn on it, huh? <laughs> Sharp side facing out. That's shocking on this quad. The clutch might be shot too. So sharp side facing out. So the friction plates on these guys, the last friction plate does not go in the same grooves as the rest of them. It goes into these little notches here as per the Honda manual. And this is a stock clutch. So that's exactly how it's going to go in. When we took it apart, it had them all in the same locations. Uh, will it run both ways? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, but this is how the manual calls for it to be done. So that is how I am putting it back together. Um, everything's done. So to go over torque specs one more time, we had 115 inch pounds on the 10 millimeters, 115 inch pounds for the cam chain slider bolt with the collet. Um, uh, I did the same for the uh, oil screen at the bottom. And we are pretty much ready once we put our uh, outer pressure plate together remember this um shift pin engagement pin whatever you want to call it goes on the inside so in here so now we could locate this put this on here and then we could take our springs put these back all where they go and I believe it's nine foot pounds, um, but nine foot pounds, if I'm not mistaken, and don't quote me on this, uh, I'm not a professional, guys. I'm not a certified mechanic, nothing like that. Um, nine foot pounds is when you're using brand new bolts to put these back in. These bolts are already used and stretched, so we're going to go to seven foot pounds. So I'm just going to go ahead and get these started. One more thing to note when you're uh, screwing these in, once you start getting some pressure on them, um, it'd be like the same thing as if you were um, putting a, another wheel on your car. You want to do it in a star pattern. So crisscross, boom, 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 boom. Just uh, helps it seat evenly. All right, guys. So thank you for joining me in the garage today. Um, in the next video, we're going to start putting the top end on this quad and get it fired up. Um, I'll show you how, uh, what I do to gaskets when I put them on so it makes it easier for them to take off next time you use it. Uh, you know, what to do with the dowel pins. If you have stuck dowel pins, I'll show you guys all that in the next video when we do the top end. Thank you very much for joining me in the garage today and sticking through this video. I know it was a little bit longer than my normal ones, but, you know, you kind of got to put it all in the video. You can't leave some of this stuff out. So I try to make it to where, you know, if you guys have to do this, you can actually build this along while watching the video. Use it as a reference point. Um, but, uh, the 465 build, um, we got a couple more parts I got to order. I got to order the suspension. I had the Elka stage three fronts, but I got rid of those cause I want to get a whole new set. So in the next video, when we start working on the 465, I got to prep the frame. Um, and I should be having a really nice box of some stuff coming in today. I'll throw a short out and show you guys what it is and unbox it. Maybe even do a video on it. And, uh, that's it. So after I get the top end started, I'll film that and you guys will see this 2004 TRX 400EX get finished and running and then it will go back to its owner. So if you guys haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel, I'm trying to grow the channel, doing some good things with it. Uh, if you have any suggestions or any questions, feel free to hop into the comments section. I answer every single one of the comments I get. There's not one that I haven't answered yet. So I'll see you guys down there as well and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thumbs up, subscribe, peace out.